as you have seen this, this is a continuous thing nowadays that you know there is the architect who's a very disorganized guy, according to the engineers, wants to change all the time, every minute, and uh, never finishes a project. And then what does the architect say? That the engineer has the head like a cube. He can only think that way. He never wants to make changes, and he always wants the la latest version of the project at the first uh, change. So how to overcome this? How can we turn this fight into something which is more collaborative? I think we should integrate with engineering. How do we integrate that they want to exchange the same way uh, data in an intelligent format, and that means that, that the changes are much more effective and there are much less errors when you change data with them. So, what is the first step? Here, we, integrate, uh, we realized uh, that we spoke a lot with engineers. We have even a product manager who is a structural engineer in Graphisoft, and uh, came to a conclusion that there are five main steps in the engineering architecture workflow. Uh, the first one is modeling uh, by both sides. Then there is a model filtering or classification that which are the load-bearing or non-load-bearing elements. Uh, of course, you have to export your model to the engineer so he will be able to use it. There is a referencing. I will speak a little bit later what is that. And of course, there is a coordination. The coordination is there because whenever you want to, uh, when the new changes come, you have to synchronize it with the older ones and compare them. So here, we use uh, exclusive uh, IFC because that is the open format and we will turn here, as you see, a technology into a solution. So, first thing is modeling. I hope I don't have to explain you that how to model an ARCHICAD. Most of you are users, so you know. But I will speak a few words that how do this engineering, this structural application works. Most of them have three engines. There is a modeling engine for the physical engine. Uh, most of most of them have an analytic engine to make the stress analysis and the calculations. And some the good ones are even capable of detailing and making construction documentation out of the, uh, mod out of the model. So here now, what we will do, we will look at a little bit the workflow between ARCHICAD 14 and Revit Structure from Autodesk. So, uh, I will ask Mark first that you see on here on the right screen that here we have a building and let's see the architectural model of this. And now, when we have the architectural model, uh, th this model has been created, of course, using uh, uh, ARCHICAD. Uh, what, is the, what is the second step in the model? It's called model filtering or classification. So I will ask uh, a Mark now to switch to the structural model of this building. You see that with one click you get here on the right screen, this is the structural model. But if we have a closer look, look we will see something uh, that our users are very intuitive. And one of the guys modeled all the four ceilings with slabs. Now the, here's the classification. Do you want to export this for the structural engineer? Of course not. He's not interested in the four ceilings, just the load-bearing elements. So with one click in ARCHICAD 14, you can select uh, those elements which are on the ceiling layer. There they are. These are the four ceilings. And then I just open them, and you will see a new thing there down, which tells you that what kind of element it is. In reality, it's a ceiling. So we don't want to, uh, to export it. And then it is if it's load-bearing or non-load-bearing. It's a non-load-bearing element. And as you see, if when Mark clicks OK, automatically these ceilings are gone. And now this model can be easily exported for the structural engineer. So in this case, uh, uh, before we save it, I will do comes the so-called Model export. In model export, is, as you see on the left, we have created so-called optimized translators. What are these? These are so-called uh, 
dictionaries where you can translate the architectural model for different structural applications. We have quite a wide range of applications and of course you can customize them and create your own. Why are these translators need, needed? Why is it not enough one? Because all the different applications, there are certain things we, which are interpreted in a different way. For example, Revit structure interprets the meshes quite a different way than Tecla or, or for example, Nemechek Alplan. Of course, you don't have Nemechek Alplan here in New Zealand, but for example, uh, uh, these can be different and also, for example, the wall intersections are interpreted quite different way in different applications. So, and the other thing is what is more, much more important to make it easy to make it a one-click save. Uh, I would show you something now. This is how it looked before. This is how, it, with the previous versions, you had to save an IFC file in order to communicate with the Revit structure. Now let's see how it works now. Now you have this dialog. Uh, Mark will show it. So you just choose there the appropriate translator after choosing the, the file format. And then the only thing is you need to do is to click save. And then it is automatically exported. And now, let me sit down. We have imported this model into Revit structures. And now, for the first time in the history of New Zealand, you will see ARCHICAD and Revit Structure running together. Of course, Revit Structure only on the second screen. So, if you look at the two drawings, what you see there, they look quite identical. What is the main difference? The main difference here is that the structural grid is missing from the Revit one. Why? Because the IFC import of Revit is quite good, although there are certain glitches. So to fix those, we created a special add-in. What you can, I mean your engineer, can install into Revit structure. So I go to add-ins. And then you will see here that improve IFC exchange. And then I say that let's run this add-in. And this add-in will run within a few seconds and it will fix the following issue what we had with the grid. Takes a little bit of time. That's usually everything in Revit. <laughs> But then what you will see the, that the result, uh, what we have here, will be quite satisfactory. Okay? And there it is. There is the building now in Revit structure. And of course, I can switch to a 3D view. So I will switch to a 3D view of this building. And there you will have the building in 3D view in Revit structure as well. And if we switch to the architect uh, structure, you see that the two are practically identical.